Hello everyone. Welcome to video 2 of chapter 7. In this chapter, we will look at a um, systematic way to find an adjustment flow. So from the previous example, we saw that we had to do three rounds of uh, adjustment. The first and the second round, they are rather short lengths of adjustment. But the third one is rather lengthy and it's not that easy to detect it. Let's revisit that example and that step and see that we could have a systematic way of constructing that adjustment. Okay, so what's being repeated here is the, the table um, after the second round of adjustment. I have this table and uh, I see that on um, column 4 there's still unmet demand and row 3 has surplus here. So I would like to find a way of adjusting it such that I'm, uh, I will ship out two more units somewhere here and eventually the two units would land in destination 4 in this column 4 somewhere here increase by two units so keep that goal in your mind okay so how do we find the adjustment how do we see where this flow can be um meaning the surplus can flow through this relation and end up in d4 Okay, so here we are going to explain an algorithm. So let's look at this chart and I'm going to mark with index all the possible adjustment following the following uh, with the following procedure. Okay, so we mark, first we mark the rows with surplus, mark it with S. So here we see only the third row has surplus and then we mark this S. That's the first step. Second, now with row three here, I will go through all the columns and uh, to see that which of them is possible for me to put further in, to flow in, meaning that the, the X is less than the K. Okay, so here I see that 0, 0, not here, 4, 4, not here, 1, 1, not here, here is 0, 5. So column 1 is possible, okay? So I label down here with 3, that's the row number, because it's coming from row 3 into column 1 is possible. So I mark down the column 1 down here, 3, okay? So that's the second step. Third one, okay, then I will um, look at column one. If and this adjustment is made, and which of the other two columns are possible um, for it to accommodate? So if I increase here, which one of these would uh, allow me to decrease to compensate for that increase? Then I see that this is zero, I can't decrease. Only this one can be decreased, right? So the row one. Therefore, at the row one, I will put the index one to see that's coming from this column one, this adjustment. So this one over there. Okay, so which means this will be reduced by one. Then I need to look at the rest to see that um, which of them is possible to balance the change I made here. That is, I make this smaller, then I need to look at these ones to see which one I could increase the x. So this one is 0, I could increase it, and this one is 1, I could increase to 5, but this one is um, maximum capacity, so no. So only the column two and three. Okay, so now I mark here. 
in column two and three, one, one, because they come from row one that I'm discussing. Okay, so I marked two columns. Let's take a look at each of them. So for column two here, among these two, um, I, I increased this, right? So um, I need to find uh, a row that I could decrease, but I do not want to go to row three because that's where I want to ship out. So let's look at row two. Can I decrease this? Yes, this is two. I could decrease it. So I put column two here. This is the column. It's connected to that one. And now let's look at the column three that we marked. So for column three, um, not looking at row three, now row two, could I decrease this to compensate it? Yes, I can. This is four, so I could decrease it. Okay, so I mark three here from the column three so this one actually has two index marking two and three okay so now row two is done i would either um change here or change here um and now where could i further come this so so here the only unmarked column is column four and uh Let's check if we could increase this number further. So we see that this one is less than five. So I can increase this. Okay. Then I will mark the column four with two. Two is the row number here. This is a row two adjustment ended up in column four. Okay. Then I see that now all the rows and uh, all the columns are marked. So I'm done with my marking. Now let's use this marking to follow the possible flows. So we see that column four has unmet demand, which is two units, and it is being marked, meaning I could flow into this column four from others. So let's trace it back. So column four, where could things come from to flow into column four? Well, here is labeled row two so let's put row two can go to column four now let's go to row two and then what what can what column can flow into row two well is column two or column three either of them would work so i put there so this is column two and column three okay let's now i am in column two or three what can i do where what can flow in well it's row one that can flow into it so I have row one now. Now let's go to row one. Row one says column one can flow into it. So I, re I write column one. Now go to column one. Column one says row three can flow into it. Okay, so um, this flow chart uh, um, says that um, there is a choice here in between. You can either choose C2 or C3. For this middle one both would work so which one should we pick let's take a closer look so in this chart it involves um um here and um, row one if you pick c2 or c3 then the difference will be if you use this um or you use this to increase right so if you picked C2 here, and then the next one, it comes from row one, it comes from here, and then the adjustment you can make maximum is by one unit because you can only increase this to one. So then you can only send one unit through this flow adjustment. And instead, if you choose C3, then you will be um, end up here because it will be from here and then you go here. And then you would, uh, and we, remember, we need to, in the end, um, adjust two units. The, that's the unmet demand. So this is one is less than five by two, uh, four units. We could increase this to three. So if we choose, pick the C3 in this middle, by this analysis, we see that that's favored because then that could completely solve the problem we could ship 
two units from the surplus into d4 through that okay and that is exactly the pass that we used in the previous video for round three it was a, a long path and you at that time you might be wondering how did you find out and this is a way to find this path by marking with index and then trace back okay um a final remark before we move on mm, as you can see from this example also feasible solutions are not unique they could be multiple of them for example we can construct another feasible example for this one by picking c2 and from here and make the adjustment of one unit of adjustment and then pick c3 and make another one unit of adjustment we would have ended up with a different feasible solutions okay so there could be many of them but uh, as we have uh, remarked at the beginning for this problem we just want to find a feasible solution if we manage to find one and that's the goal and then then we're happy okay so um with all that discussion being made for the first um example it's about time to give a summary of the algorithm let's summarize it okay so how do you find a feasible solution so step one and um, from that table we attempt to make an initial flow with the following um, strategy shipping as much as possible and uh, without exceeding demand and then we go through row one and then to row two and then to row three each row at a time and so on and so forth okay an initial flow so once this flow is done then i would calculate the unmet demand for each column by adding up all the axes in that column to see if it met the demand b if it's zero then you're done and uh, you have found a feasible flow but you know that rarely happens okay now otherwise we go through the labeling process and we mark the point is to find the adjustment flow so 3a we would label all the rows with surplus that is the or the shipping out of that red lab, uh, warehouse i is less than what you have we mark all of these with s and then we let this i be the set of all these rows 3b and then for each of those um rows that's being marked with s in there for each of them and then we would determine all previously unlabeled column j for each um xij less than k the capacity not met because that means you can still ship more from there and then you label these with the the row the i as we did in the example and then you collect all these index of these columns put them in j 3c and then for each of this j you would uh, determine all unlabeled rows for which um, the xij is not zero meaning you can reduce it and then you will label all of them with j and then you put all these um, row index in the set i now um once you're done with this labeling process, two things can happen. This can lead to A, that is in 3A on 3B, these two steps here, no unlabeled column or row can be labeled. 
then um, that means uh, no feasible solutions can be found. And uh, otherwise, and a column with unmet demand is labeled, which means uh, you could uh, send things there through this uh, path. And then you trace back as we did in the example and you find a flow adjustment path and then you adjust the flow and then you go back to step two until all the demands are met okay so um it could be a pretty lengthy process especially if the number of uh, origin and destinations are large this could really quite take a while to go through okay so um, next video, we will take another example to be even more familiar with this process. Okay, so hope you have enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time.